Have you ever had so much to do that you just felt like, oh my goodness, there's, there's not enough hours in the day? Well, in a Cisco router, if it's connected with one network interface, one Ethernet connection to a network, and it needs to route between multiple networks, the router could be having the same emotion. Oh my goodness, I don't have enough interfaces. I don't have an interface for VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 and VLAN 30. I only have one physical interface. We can solve that problem with that same physical interface using a technique called router on a stick. So for this discussion, let's focus just right here on this portion of our enterprise network at the Nevada site. And this router, its name is R2, and it's got a single connection. So currently the router looks like this. So there's router two, and it's got a connection from its gig one slash zero interface into the switch. And then we have PCs that are connected via that access layer switch. So maybe this is PC one and PC two. Now, if this is just one VLAN, all the devices in the same VLAN over here in Nevada, we could use an IP address like 10.16.8, which is associated with Nevada, dot zero slash 24, and kumbaya, everybody's happy. So maybe the router R2, we're using dot six as its IP address in the last octet. So all these clients would be on the 10.16.8 network, they'd use dot six as their default gateway, and life goes on. However, what if, what if we wanted to, for security reasons or for traffic isolation, we wanted to have two or more VLANs on this switch? So what we could do is make a plan. Let's say we have VLAN 1. And in VLAN 1, we could use 10.16.8.0 with a 24-bit mask. And then for VLAN 2, we could use 10.16.9.0 slash 24. So I've got a question for you. How do we control, if we want PC1 to be in VLAN 1 and PC2 in VLAN 2, how do we control which VLAN a computer is in? And if you're saying, well, Keith, it's pretty simple. All we do is we configure the port on the switch in that color. In this case, we'll put that port that PC1 is connected to associated with VLAN 1, and we'll put the port that PC2 is associated with into VLAN 2 at the switch, and that's how we control VLAN assignments for the computers and devices that are connected to our switches. And you're spot on, that's exactly right. And then we take the further steps to configure the appropriate IP addresses for those devices in those appropriate VLANs. So let's imagine that this is our plan, and then we come up with a huge realization, oh no. <laughs> and that's this, how many interfaces here does router two have? It's got one, it's got gigabit one slash zero, and how in the world can it route for the 10.16.8 network and the 10.16.9 network if it has one physical interface. So one solution would be to add another physical interface to router two. So we could add another physical interface connected to the switch and have one of the ports connect to VLAN one and another port on the router connect to VLAN two. And that way it could have two interfaces, two IP addresses, and it could route between the two networks. However, if we don't have another physical interface that we can allocate to this, and we do not have a multi-layer switch that could support routing on its own, the answer could be a router on a stick as one of our solutions. And here is how router on a stick works. Instead of having R2 just connect via an access port in VLAN 1 or VLAN 2, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and configure the port that router 2 is connected to as a T, a short for trunk. And a trunk, as we've identified in a previous skill, allows all the VLAN traffic across that and one cool thing about his trunk is that based on the markings in the frames, we can identify for frame A and frame B and frame C exactly which VLAN they are associated with, which VLAN they belong to. And then what we could do on R2 on this gig one slash zero interface is we could create what are called sub interfaces. Think of a sub interface like a little mini me version of the parent interface. So the parent is gig one slash zero. A sub interface could be gig one slash zero, and then you and I, as the network engineers, we get to make up a number. Uh, well, it has to be a number that's a real number, but we can choose the number. So we could do like dot one for our first sub interface. And then we create this logical sub interface, and in that sub interface, we then can associate it with the VLAN of our choice and give it the IP address of our choice. We could specify encapsulation and tell it what kind of encapsulation we're using. Today, we, for trunking, we use dot one Q. And then we'll also specify the VLAN. So if this sub-interface is supposed to pay attention to frames for VLAN 1, we could add the number 1 to represent pay attention to frames for VLAN 1. And then we'd also give it an IP address, like 10.16.8. And let's use 6.6. .6. And we now have this logical sub-interface that's paying attention to VLAN 1 traffic across this trunk link from the switch. 
So now VLAN 1 users can use the router as their default gateway if they want to, and we can create another sub-interface to support VLAN 2. And the sub-interface for VLAN 2 would look something like this. Gig, we take the physical interface, the parent, 1 slash 0, dot, and then we give it a number. A lot of people use the VLAN number as the sub-interface identifier. Not a bad idea. That way when you see it, you know, oh, that's a sub-interface for VLAN 2. And then we tell it that it's going to be using encapsulation, dot 1Q. And then we specify the VLAN that this sub-interface should be paying attention to. So in our network, it'd be any frames tagged with VLAN 2. And then we give it an IP address, 10.16.9. And we're going to use dot 6. And now, clients on the VLAN 2, on the 10.16.9 network, also have a default gateway that they can reach at dot 6 that can then do the routing on behalf of their traffic. And why do they call it router on a stick? Well, if we look at this, it kind of looks like a lollipop has one physical interface that goes to the router. You can kind of pick it up, look kind of like a lollipop. And that's why it's called a router on that single connection, that single physical connection, which is referring to the stick. So to answer the question, how do you get a router with one physical interface to route between two or more networks? The answer is you can use router on a stick where we take that physical interface, we make child or sub interfaces, each of the sub interfaces paying attention to a different 802.1Q tag and give each of those sub interfaces the appropriate IP address. And it's as if logically that router now has logical interfaces in each of those VLANs. So as a result, it can route on behalf of each of those VLANs devices. So that's the concepts and a sneak peek at some of the commands that we would use to implement router on a stick. In the next video, we'll put together a formal plan, we'll implement it, and then we'll verify it on our router in Nevada. So I'll see you in that video. Meanwhile, I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.